What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Sir MC Koi, and welcome back to the Maryland Dynasty. We've got Big 12 action here today as 1-1 one one Maryland faces 0-2 Illinois. Despite going 0-2, the Illini bring the number 3 passing offense in the NCAA to the table. It is still early in the year, and a lot of that is being carried by their star wide receiver, Mike Dudek. If we are going to have a chance of shutting this team down, it's going to have to come with defense first. And the defense has played well through this early part of the year. Turnovers on offense have been the story. If we can minimize turnovers and let the defense do their thing, we've got a pretty good chance of starting off 2-0 this year in conference play let's get into it and let's see what we can do maryland will be opening with the ball and it is a loud crowd here in illinois pigram already being flushed out throwing and finds jaquille bay who's able to turn up field and get close to the 50 yard line on first down new set of downs now for maryland as they go handoff to lorenzo harrison the sophomore running back picks up four yards on his first carry of the day he's trying to build on a pretty good start to the year third and six pigram to the air for harrison but he cannot come down with the pass so it's the illinois ball and illinois loves the passing attack mixed with their no huddle attack so they've got an interesting offense to shut down so we'll face a third and eight crouch back to pass and he's instantly under pressure as anna bonham throws down chase crouch and illinois will punt one thing is their punter does not have the strongest leg as we see this one barely goes to midfield and DJ Moore is going to spin it up the way to the 40. Nice starting field position now for Maryland. Six minutes to go in the first. They'll come out read option on first down as there goes Pigram up the field breaking one tackle and he'll pick up nine on first down. Third and one upcoming Harrison in the backfield and he'll fight forward and pick up an easy first down. Maryland continues to move the chains. Well into field goal range, it's another handoff for Harrison who gets to the outside. A big spin move from Lorenzo. Harrison will get him inside the 15 yard line. Maryland threatening to put the first points up on the board. On second down, it's Pigram to throw. Decent protection as he goes over the middle and a nice diving play by Stanley Green saving what would have been a touchdown. Third and eight, Pigram again to the air, stepping up and throws, and this one's gonna be intercepted by James, and now the scoring drive is ended. Unfortunate way to see it end. Illinois comes back, and now we have to see what the defense can do. As Dudek makes his first catch, he's brought down after a gain of five. On second and five, Crouch throwing over the middle. Now he's got his man, Shannard Davis, for seven yards and a first down. Sending the tight end in motion, he'll stay in the ball. Crouch to throw left side. There's Turner now. As his receivers are starting to get open here on their second offensive drive. Handoff now to Kendrick Foster. Cuts it back left side. Breaking away from first contact. He'll pick up eight. A nice run there from Kendrick Foster. His opening run. That'll bring up a third and three now. Crouch throwing and nearly intercepted by Antoine Brooks. That'll end the Illinois scoring drive. It is still scoreless here in the first quarter. Pigram rolling out, nearly gets sacked there. With time throwing, and this time it's another interception. Pigram on back-to-back -back throws now has back-to-back -back interceptions. The young quarterbacks showing a little bit of struggling here in the early parts of this game as now Crouch finds his tight end. Caleb Reams down inside the five-yard line. Illinois is primed to get the first points on the board today, but they go speed option. And Shane Cockrell is all over that play. Third and goal just inside the 10. It's Crouch to throw. He's got protection as it breaks down. Goes outside for Foster. But he has nowhere to go as Brooks will wrap him up. So Illinois gets the first points of the day with a field goal. Now Maryland looking for an answer and looking to not turn the ball over. Harrison picks up five. On second down now here for Maryland. They again go handoff to Lorenzo Harrison. Harrison is able to pick up six yards and a first down. After back-to-back -back interceptions, you've got to think they're going to be focusing on the ground game a little more, but on third and seven, Pigram is going to be forced to throw, but being flushed out of the pocket, he's going to use his legs to pick up this first down. 
There's 11 yards and Maryland is into Illinois territory. Second down, a screen set up for Lorenzo Harrison. He's able to get upfield, picking up six, setting up a manageable third down and three. Pigram to throw on third down. Looking left side, has his tight end Hayward been out of bounds. So fourth and one, the offense stays out. And the tight end, now playing fullback, will pick up the first down on the ground. Maryland keeping this drive alive. We are in the second quarter as we'll see the read option keeper for Pigram who tries to make a move. Still picks up six before being taken down. Second down. Harrison takes the outside handoff. Cutting it upfield and picking up the first down is Lorenzo Harrison. He's had a lot of good running lanes here today. First and ten at the 20-yard line. It's Pigram to throw. Protection breaking down as he's going to roll left. And it looks like he is going to be chased down. And he fumbles the ball. It's picked up by Illinois. And that will be the second scoring drive that will be turned over in the red zone. Not a good start in the first half here for Maryland. Illinois goes handoff to Kendrick Foster and he's going nowhere on this second down run. Quantrez Knight is all over it. So a third down and seven. Defenses are both playing strong football as Foster is going to get to the outside and Kendrick Foster on a third and seven run picks up the first down. They'll go right back to Kendrick Foster on second down and again he gets the edge. Picks up six yards this time, setting up a manageable third and short. Third down and three now for Maryland. Crouch back to throw. Quick throw to the outside and it's his tight end Caleb Reams. Dragged down at the 30 yard line but not before picking up 27. Illinois threatening to score again as now it's the second string running back Reggie Corbin. He's got a lot more speed than Foster and he picks up nine. Play action, no, it's a read keeper for Crouch as he's inside the 10 yard line. He picks up 12 yards himself. Illinois looking to add more points onto the board. A touchdown here will give him a two score lead. On third and goal though, Crouch is hit again by Anna Bonham. He hasn't got the sack. But another field goal and Electric City's Notre Dame not looking very good right now against Purdue. We'll see how that holds up. But Illinois does settle for the field goal. And now Maryland has got to start getting some points on the board. Pigram goes to the outside for Tavon Jacobs. That's good for seven. On second down, the pitch option goes to Lorenzo Harrison, who's able to pick up the first down. He has looked very, very good running the ball today as that continues to improve. Ty Johnson now in the game, takes the handoff, and he bounces to the outside, and Johnson's got space. Inside the 30, breaking a tackle in the 20. That'll go down as a 42-yard run for Ty Johnson, getting his best run of the year. Nice to see him doing well in a lesser role than what a lot of people expected for him. A third down now. Look for Maryland as Pigram is going to go down. He's sacked, and that'll bring out the field goal unit. Maryland cuts Illinois' lead in half. Less than three minutes to go. Crouch throwing dropped. Just dropped by Davis. So a third and nine now for Illinois. Maryland with a chance to get the ball back if they can stop him here as there's a sack in the backfield. It's Chandler Burkett, the team leader in sacks. Now here comes Maryland with great field positioning. A pass complete to DJ Moore, his first reception of the game. Third down and six though for Maryland. Can they move the chains? Pigram again being flushed out by pressure. Gets the throw off and that one could have been intercepted. There are two defenders in the area. And on fourth and six, the offense is staying out. Pigram again under pressure, but gets Jacquee Ove on the outside. That's good for 12. Maryland moves the chains. Closing in on one minute to go, it's first and 10 Maryland. Pigram over the middle has DJ Turner. Turner fights down to the one yard line. That's good for 30. Now with 30 seconds to go, it's a toss out for Lorenzo Harrison, and he's got the edge. Maryland is able to take the lead as we close in on the half. A very nice two-minute drill there from Maryland. We're finally starting to see the offense turning around. No turnovers. And Maryland will go into the lead with a 10-6 lead. We'll see you in the second half. 
Thank you guys for watching up to this point. If you have already please do check out my patreon i did change a lot of the numbers to make them a lot lower they were very unrealistically high there's a way for you to get involved into my bears franchise and with youtube changing their monetization status it's a way for me to keep this channel going so please do check it out and let's get back to the action maryland did not have a strong first half with three turnovers despite all of that the defense has kept them in it holding illinois to just three field goals and the offense was finally able to heat things up in the second quarter, picking up a touchdown and a field goal to take a four-point lead. They definitely have to start building on it, though, because Illinois has been able to pass with a little bit of will. If Mike Dudek starts getting involved in the second half, then Maryland might have a little bit to worry about. But you see they are definitely dominating in time of possession and yards. It's just the turnovers are the one thing that are keeping this game close. The defense, though, is keeping it in check. And we'll see if they can do that as we start in the second half here as Crouch is back to pass on first down. That's a complete pass to Trenard Davis, but it doesn't go for much. Now a third and medium for Crouch. Only a four-man rush as Anna Bonham is close to getting there, but Kendrick Foster makes the reception. He's able to turn up field for an Illinois first down. Fighting line, I come out, pass on second down, and there's Mike Dudek getting involved. His biggest reception of the day goes for 16. We held him and checked only two receptions for nine yards. Crouch throwing in this time, it's Dudek again, and he's able to turn up field and get a first down. What did I say? We've got to contain that man. Second and 10, Crouch to throw. Good protection, and he just lobs this one out of bounds. So a third and 10. And the defense hold here. Crouch only faces a four-man rush and takes a shot deep downfield. That should have been intercepted. He is lucky that one fell harmlessly to the ground. But on fourth and ten, Illinois is keeping the offense out here. An interesting choice as Crouch this time is going to be intercepted. It's Darnell Savage Jr. You try to tell me there's a better name on this team. Beautiful job intercepting that pass. Maryland will take over. Again, the defense does their job. Now we'll see Pigram going to the air, and there's DJ Moore wide open over the middle of the field, and no one's going to catch him. And just like that, a turnover and a big bomb downfield. 77 yards is apparently a new record for the longest passing play. And Maryland has opened up this lead to 11 points. As, ooh, you don't want to throw that screen. That's a big hit and a big loss. Leading to a third and six. Now setting up another screen this time to the running back. And Kendrick Foster is going to have good blocking. The defense wasn't ready for it. Illinois moves the chains. Three men down for Maryland, and they're only going to send three on the rush. Forces Crouch out of the pocket, and he looks for Dudek, who makes the catch. I didn't think he was going to make it. So a third and three for Crouch setting up the option, and Foster has nowhere to go despite the pitch. Great tackling there by the Maryland defense. And now we'll see the offense come out as Harrison doesn't get his block and he gets leveled. A third and ten. It's Pigram. It's a screen out for Harrison. He has some open space. Breaking tackles, but there's just too many Illinois defenders there. So a three and out. As the defense are starting to kind of settle in and take things over here. The second down they go screen for Foster and he's going to lose a yard. And both defenses now are really starting to take this game over, especially if they don't move the chains here. Crouch going to the air, and that's complete to Trenard Davis. What a catch along the sidelines as Illinois keeps things moving into Maryland territory. Handoff now to Foster going left side. He picks up about three. Third and eight now for Illinois. Can Maryland stop him here and keep him out of scoring range? Crouch to throw, pressure from Anna Bonham. He gets it for Corbin, who's able to turn up field to pick up a first down. That is just a not a good play from the defense, but this time Reggie Corbin is going nowhere. He's going to lose four on that one. Brooks is there to make the big tackle. Third and 11, they send the tight end in motion. They're setting up the screen, but Crouch has no chance. It's Burkett. Sack number two on the day. Illinois will just punt this one away. DJ Moore is the man to return it. He's going to let it go, and it is going to land at the one-yard line. Wow, you've got to be kidding me. 
No first and ten from the one. The handoff will go to Harrison, who breaks away from first contact. And Lorenzo Harrison is able to get a big first down. Go to run there from Harrison. He's looked very good today. Second and ten. Pigram throws to the outside for DJ Moore. It'll be good for nine yards, and that'll get him over 100 on the day. Third and one. They just go read option. Handoff to Harrison. There's four yards and another first down. Good drive thus far that started at their own one yard line. See if they can keep it up. Ty Johnson picking up three yards as we near the end of the third. This third and seven will be the first play of the fourth quarter and it's going to be a screen to Ty Johnson who runs through a would-be tackler. Big first down as we're going to see a lot of Ty Johnson as it seems that, um, I don't know if Harrison's hurt or if he's just tired out. Regardless, there's a nice pass to DJ Moore. That'll be good for a first down. Second down and 10, shotgun. They're going to go read option. Pigram on the keeper has blocking, and Pigram will pick up a first down. This drive is now close to field goal range. Again, this is a drive that started at their own one yard line. First and 10, Pigram. Rolling outside away from pressure. It's closing in as he takes a throw on the run, and it's going to be intercepted by Illinois, and there goes Harding. He's just going to outrun everyone. Jake Funk is the only man to get there. And he won't. Illinois' first touchdown comes from the defense. Their fourth turnover of the day. And that is going to make this game a lot closer than, for comfort than what you'd want to see. Now they're going to go for the two-pointer to make this a field goal game. Kendrick Foster will just walk in. And all of a sudden, we're back to a three-point lead. Ty Johnson remains in the game as he picks up four yards on first down. Still in the game is Johnson. I don't wonder if he's, Harrison is hurt. He seems to be okay, but I've just seen a lot of offense out there, and it seems a lot of these guys are starting to get tired. First and ten, the handoff goes to Johnson, trying to get outside, running through first contact, and he picks up six. He's looked really good coming in today when he essentially lost the starting role, and they go speed option. It is well covered by Illinois, and they will get the ball back. Three and a half to go, trying to cut into this Maryland lead and take back their lead. Third and four, Crouch to throw. Looking to the outside, it's complete to Caleb Reeves, the tight end. Illinois is moving up near midfield. A third down, though, for Crouch in Illinois. Looking deep downfield, he's got Mike Duda behind the defense, breaking tackles. He was not gonna be denied the end zone. I said it earlier, at the end of the first half, we have got to contain Mike Dudek. And here we see him getting behind the coverage. And then even when they were able to catch up with him, two defenders were not enough to take him down. And with almost two minutes to go, they've taken the lead. And hey, what do you know, Electric City? The boys in Notre Dame were able to pull it off without losing to Purdue. It was a close one though. So now with two minutes to go, Maryland down by four. They need a touchdown. Pigram throwing to the outside, and it's swatted away by Dunlap, and that'll bring up a third and seven. Pigram to throw. Over the middle, there's Jake Funk, and Funk will move the chains and pick up a first down for Maryland. Got the time. They've just got to play smart with the ball. Dump out now to Ty Johnson. He will just run out of bounds, avoiding contact, but keeping the clock not moving. Lead to a second and one. Pigram rolling out, hit as he throws, and it's going to be intercepted now by Sumter. And he's got a lot of space in front of him, and I don't think he's going to be caught. The lineman misses the tackle, and Illinois with their second pick six will open up a two-scored lead on this game. This is not looking good for Maryland. We now need two touchdowns with just over a minute to go. Kick will be fielded at the five by Tino Ellis, a cornerback, and he's got blocking to the outside, and now there goes Tino Ellis, and Maryland is going to answer it right back. Oh, my God, we are not out of this one yet. Tino Ellis coming in with the clutch kick return when it was needed most. Amazing downfield blocking, by the way. And then he just outran everyone on the edge. And now the two-point conversion to make this a field goal game. Orton Schlager is in as our quarterback was hurt, and he's just going to throw an interception. And luckily, that was tackled. That would have given Maryland two points. 
But now the defense needs to stop the offense. And then we need to get the ball back from Maryland. Corbin picks up five yards on first down. Now it's a third and four. Crouch hands it off to Corbin, trying to get to the outside, and he has nowhere to go. Now here comes the offense. With just 35 seconds to go, down by five points. Pigram remains in the game, back from injury. Oh man, but look. A face mask is going to give Maryland 15 free yards, and you cannot be making those plays if you're on the Illinois defense, but we'll take it. Now into Illini territory. Pigram back to throw for all the love in the world. Please don't throw an interception. A dangerous throw to Avery Williams, but it's caught. And now with less than 30 seconds, Maryland is moving inside the red zone. Pigram to throw wide open. It's Jarvis Davenport. And Maryland has somehow completed this comeback. Oh my God. The two-point conversion to make it a field goal game. Pigram to the air. Outside is DJ Turner. And now with just 21 seconds to go, we've just got to stop this Illinois offense. First and 10, Crouch. To throw left side, there's Mike Duda. you got to contain him. And take their first time out. They have two more. First and 10, it's Crouch again to the air. Looking left side, and now it's the tight end. Caleb Reams up to midfield as they take another time out. First and 10, Crouch to throw. Good protection as he takes a deep shot. It's intercepted and this one is gonna be over. Maryland puts this game away. Two interceptions from the secondary. And wow, that was one hell of a game. I'm gonna come right out and say it right now. That is one of those games that when you look at the score sheet, five turnovers, we didn't deserve to win that game. The defense played outstanding, keeping us in it. But with five turnovers, four picks, and a fumble from Pegram, you've got to believe that we shouldn't have won this game. It was one of the weaker opponents in the Big Ten, but I mean, when we get into later opponents like Penn State, Ohio State, we cannot afford to make those kind of mistakes because they will capitalize and they will destroy us. Illinois had two touchdowns, both on defense. They didn't score an offensive touchdown. Well, wait, never mind. They did have that Dudek one late. But otherwise, it took them forever to get on the board for offense. The defense did their job, holding Illinois to 14 points. Regardless, it's a win. And in the end, that is all you can ask for. Pigram, he threw for 274 yards and two touchdowns. But the turnovers have to be mitigated. We cannot continue to be throwing for so many turnovers. On the ground, Harrison had a pretty good day running for 62, and Ty Johnson had himself 61 yards. Harrison was not hurt. He was just exhausted, and he was taken out. DJ Moore led the way with 106 yards and a touchdown on four receptions. We also had Jarvis Devonport getting a touchdown. Ty Johnson, Vey, and Edwards were our leading receivers otherwise. Defensively, got to see who was leading the way because there were some big contributors. That's Jermaine Carter, the senior linebacker comes through with 10 solo tackles dear god two tackles in the backfield for Anna Bonham and Burkett and of course two sacks for Burkett and a sack for Anna Bonham both of our ends getting involved the interceptions coming from Denzel Conyers and Darnell Savage well despite being two and one Maryland is on top of the Big Ten East as the only team in the Big Ten East that has played any conference games so they do at least come out to a nice, nice generous start. Something that I feel we will be needing. Again, as we get in later to the season, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, they're very, very tough opponents that we do have to face in the Big Ten. And we cannot expect to win those games with sloppy football. That's just all there is to it. But regardless, despite his rough game and his rough start to the season overall, Pigram will be our starter as we face 1-1 one one Troy. Troy, coming off of a disappointing overtime loss against Arkansas State, will be looking for redemption. Looking at our team, leaders Pigram, five touchdowns, seven picks. Again, interceptions have got to go down. That's all there is to it. Burkett with three sacks leading the way and more leading our way in receiving. Looking at Troy's quarterback, he has yet to throw an interception on the year. 
Let's see if we can be his first. Thank you guys so much for watching this game. What a game it was. A crazy come from behind victory. Don't like to do it like that every week. But, uh, you know, a win is a win. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you're new. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment who you think the team MVP is. And if you can, please do check out the Patreon. It would be a huge help to me and it would be an awesome way to get you guys involved in my series. I'll see ya. Back from the dead.